Everybody knows that's a toenail. It comes from the skin. It's made of a material that's harder than the skin. It's used for digging. It's like a rhinoceros horn. Rhinoceros horn is made of keratin. It's a material coming from the skin and going to a point. On the toenail, that's the same thing. But what happens if something grows out of the skin, out of that same hard material, it comes up like that? That's not a toenail. That's not a rhinoceros horn. That's a growth. And it's got hard nail-like material on it. And nobody wants that on their butt. I don't care if you're a dog or a human. I wouldn't want it on my butt. So what makes the skin produce that hard keratin nail or horn type material? It can start as innocently as a wart. A wart can be stimulated to grow by a virus and that same virus can even make that wart turn, in, turn into a tumor. And either the virus uh, disturbs skin or a tumor can disturb skin can uh, cause that keratin to grow, that nail type stuff that grow up out of the skin and produce that horny wart. And that's what can cause that. Uh, so oftentimes if it looks odd, we can send a biopsy in to make sure that the base of that horny wart isn't concealing a tumor or cancer. So this is a wart gone wild. It's a little bit harder than a wart, and, but yet it's not, we know it's not malignant, so we just have to make sure and get enough of it so it doesn't grow back. So usually with, with, with tumors that are, are malignant, we'll cut quite a ways away to make sure we don't, we don't leave any malignant tissue. But with this one, we just want to make sure we have enough of that stock so we don't get that rhinoceros horn coming back. So I'm going to going to cut on that side and then notice I'm cutting like a football because that's the way that's the way incisions heal best is if you cut them like a football and it meets and no I'm not using a handle um, sometimes I do I have I've not used a handle for years and years so and I could get my drape out of the way but I'm not I'm cutting through the skin it's a little thicker skin than normal and then I'm gonna Cut down into the base of it. So yeah, it's pretty thick skin. Now that I got it all cut, I can um, go along the guidelines of what I cut. Oh boy, that's thick skin. This dog has, if I already said that, I won't bore you with it, but this dog has thick skin. So. Show you what I'm doing here. Down the edge of the football, see the elliptical incision? And then we'll go in up by doing that. And now we got the uh, On Bloody Pond. Um, it's a movie about a hole in the skin that fills up with blood. And we're going to see if there's vessels that continue want to leak. There they are, see them along the sides? They'll clot in just a minute or two. But so we're looking. Don't really see any any weird tissue there. That's just subcutaneous tissue. That's tissue between the skin and the muscle down there in the bloody hole. And it's a normal insulating layer of the body. And it's also a source of fat if if we were starving but mainly it's insulating and protection against bumps if you bump on that spongy tissue look it's like a little bloody mattress it's so you could sleep on it so that's what would go uh, that's the kind of tissue we got skin subcutaneous tissue and and then of course the blood vessels that service everything but you can notice they're, they're, they're um, starting to clot now, except for the ones that don't want to, because whenever I say that, they won't. 
so you can see that the hole's starting to dry up. There's one down there that wants to, but when I sew it together, actually the, the sutures themselves form a, a, a compression that will bring it together and will stop the flow of blood. So we'll put this little warty mountain over here. Look how cute it is. Closing the sub Q, uh, which is, uh, you've probably seen that in some of my other videos. Um, sub Q closes the, um, that area and anchors it down to the muscle. So that's closed. And you can see the bleeding's a lot less now. Um, and then I'm going to close up the, the, the skin with a suture that will hold those edges together because it's so thick. Sometimes, sometimes you need subcute uh, skin sutures and sometimes you don't. So in this case I'm going to take the skin at the end of the football, right? And this is at the exact, well not the exact distance, but a good distance around by it. And then you're going to close it with a, a bunch of skin sutures. So you, these don't go too tight. Just approximate where the skin's gonna go, and it's the old four ties, like that, and it goes right across the the, the area, and so at the end, we hope it'll look nice and straight. And boy, this skin is tough. I mean, tougher than normal. You're not going to bite through this dog, but it's got a shield on there. And maybe that's what that little horny stuff was. Maybe it's got more of that in the skin than normal. Because, I mean, it's tougher than normal. And I put the needle through a whole bunch of skin, so I can tell. Well, there's the finished suturing of the skin that closed that football type incision and there's the horny wart next to it with that thick layer of subcutaneous tissue. So I did suture that subcutaneous tissue underneath but I got interrupted and had to talk and, and forgot to turn on the camera again. But anyway, uh, it went together well. The bleeding stopped when uh, I compressed it and let's hope the wart doesn't come back. It's a nice cushy underneath mattress that I'm talking about, the insulating function of the subcutaneous tissue. Well, if you get a chance, check out my website, dogdishdiet.com, and look at the Dog Diet Answer Book and Dog Dish Diet. They're both books about feeding your animal better. Uh, I can't tell you how many hundreds and hundreds of dogs I helped over the years by feeding them a different diet. I went to a dermatology seminar the other night and they say dogs have many types of allergies. They have allergies to fleas, pollens and molds and foods and they might not just have one or the other. So if you can decrease the number of allergens in the food, who knows, everything might get better. So I hope you enjoyed the rhinoceros growth in the butt and uh, well that wasn't a <laughs> the horny wart. Uh, have a good day.